there has been much debate recently over the new immigration policies of the Trump administration. The supporters of this plan claim that this new restriction helps to ensure the safety of our citizenry. And while there may be a case to be made on that point, I don't happen to agree. And when I worry about the safety of myself and of my family and the people that I truly care about in my life, the danger of refugees is relatively low on my radar. My fears tend to originate much, much closer to home. On February 1st of 2017, there was a lockdown at my youngest daughter's high school. Now, it turns out that three young men had been seen in the parking lot of the school with a gun. And then authorities and school officials were alerted to the situation. The school then engaged in a lockdown drill, which all public schools in the state are required to prepare for. And fortunately, at the end of the day, students and staff were all safe and unharmed. And thankfully, those three young men were then apprehended and arrested, and the gun in question turned out to be nothing more than a BB gun. However, in the hours following the incident, I heard the dreaded phrase that causes any parent panic, anxiety, and nausea. Those two magic words, active shooter. I had received text messages and phone calls throughout the day, which is standard procedure that the school was in lockdown, but there were no details in those messages or phone calls as to why. So therefore, it was not until after the all clear was given near the end of the school day that I finally heard the words active shooter. Those two terrifying words in tandem immediately drum up images of the Sandy Hook massacre, the Columbine shootings, the Virginia Tech killings, or any of the other myriad school shootings our country has endured in the last 20-some years. These rampages are not the result of lax immigration policies. They are not the outcropping of Islamic fundamentalism. This is homegrown violence. It is also terrorism. This violence is so homegrown and so unique to our country that one could almost use the word exclusive to describe our American attachment to it. My perspective on this particular issue is, I think, specifically and particularly unique for two reasons. First and foremost, in addition to having my own children, like many of you, in public high school and in college, I work with schools on a daily basis. I own and run a business where I sell caps and gowns and class rings and graduation announcements to high school seniors. I am literally in and out of high school buildings hundreds of times every single school year. There are more than 100 people who are administrators, office staff, support staff, teachers, janitorial staff, people that I'm proud to call friends and colleagues who I work with and see on a regular basis. They're in these environments that I visit every single day. And both they and I and you and your children are far more likely to be affected by the terrorism of a school shooting perpetrated by a naturally born American citizen than any of us are likely to be the victim of radical Islamic terrorism committed by someone who somehow managed to sneak through our borders. In the 17 years that I have been working in this field, I have seen nearly every school I work with and every school that I visit add locks on their front doors when at one time there were none. Security cameras have been placed at entrances to provide full view of every person entering and they have to be granted access before they can even be allowed in the building. Staff and students spend hours every year practicing drills and learning escape plans in the event of a school shooter. In short, the likelihood of a school shooting is given the same preparation, attention, and possibility as a fire or a tornado. We now prepare for school shootings and natural disasters as though they were the exact same thing. The second reason I have a unique viewpoint on this issue is that I was raised in the small town of Bath, Michigan. Bath, Michigan is where the greatest act of school massacre ever occurred in this country. In the spring of 1927, a disgruntled board member named Andrew Kehoe planted explosives in the Bath Public School building. And while much of the dynamite that Kehoe used didn't detonate, the explosion that happened on the morning of May 18, 1927 was enough to take the lives of 42 
students, and staff. Kehoe then killed his wife, drove into town, killed the superintendent who was looking at the carnage, and then killed himself. Those 45 deaths still cast a pallor over the small town where I grew up. They cast the same sort of pallor as the ones that exist over places like Newtown, Connecticut, and Columbine, and so many other places that will never be the same ever again because of tragedies and because of terrorism like this. And while we're fortunate that there's never been a school disaster quite as grave as the bath bombing, the frequency with which these events take place now is simply staggering. There have been an estimated 142 school shootings in the last three years. Think about that. 142 incidents where shots were fired just in our schools. These are just 142 incidents in the last three years that have taken place just in a place where we educate children. This is to say nothing of the massacres of innocent churchgoers in Charlestown, North Carolina, or the Aurora movie theater shooting, or the other scores of mass shootings that plague our nation on a far too regular basis. And yes, this is a complex problem with a complex solution, and it will require more than one policy. But let's be honest, changing our immigration laws will not make us safer. At least not in this respect. These shootings are the single greatest source of terrorism we face today in our day-to-day -day lives in America. And do not be led to believe that there's something other than terrorism. Walking into a school filled with innocent children and innocent staff and opening fire is an act of terrorism. That in and of itself is the definition of of terrorism. It's not just a school shooting. It's not just a tragedy caused by mental illness. It is terrorism. And this new immigration policy has been sold to us as a device to make us safer. And it is even being acknowledged by those who support it as a compromise to some of our republic's most traditional and fundamental values. And they are willing to make that sacrifice for our safety. But if this legislation is truly about safety, then how can we not address the elephant in the room of homegrown terrorism, much of which is perpetrated on the innocent school children and teachers of this country? Now, surely, as you're listening to me say this, you're probably thinking about other incidents like the tragedy in San Bernardino or the Orlando nightclub shooting. Yes, these were horrific acts. But these were horrific acts committed by natural-born U.S. citizens. Certainly, it's possible and perhaps even likely that those horrific actions had been motivated by misguided religious beliefs. But they are the misguided religious beliefs of natural-born Americans, much like the twisted actions and misguided beliefs of people like Dylan Roof, Timothy McVeigh, Ted Kaczynski, and so many others. We should have a robust debate in this country about who we invite into our nation, who we welcome into our family. But that debate should not be based solely on fear or on the false promise of a false sense of security. Every day when I walk in and see the locked doors of a school that I am visiting, I am reminded why I am not allowed to enter freely. It's not because I've done something wrong or even because you've done something wrong. But because so many Americans in so many towns, in so many cities, have created a new normal where public school shootings are now commonplace. And instead of truly addressing the root causes of why these things happen and what we might do to actually prevent them, we've simply put locks on the doors. When this happens, I immediately think of my daughters and their safety. I think of my wife and my extended family who often help me with my work. And I think about putting them in harm's way in a public school on a particular day at a particular time in the wrong particular place. And I think about why we as a society do not truly effort and work to fix this epidemic of fear and anger and death in our country. And surely by now you're asking yourself, why don't I just randomly draw a corollary between the new immigration policy and school shootings? Is it because I'm a gun control nut? Well, to put it simply, this is a policy, this immigration policy, is a policy designed to protect us. 
And I don't feel that it protects us against that which is most likely to harm us. The recent events at my daughter's school really nailed that home for me. If I am at risk, if my family is at risk, that risk is far more likely to rise from within instead of without. Therefore, we are sacrificing our tradition of inclusion and diversity for a hollow promise when the real threat still stands directly in front of us. America must learn to protect itself against itself. Perhaps that will come from stricter background checks and other forms of gun regulation. It might come from improving and investing in our mental health services. Surely, there are any number of ways we can help to fight this affliction from which we suffer so greatly and so uniquely. But instead, we continue to do nothing but pray and think and ruminate and regret and wait for it to happen again. What does not make us safer in this regard is the exclusion of immigrants. Arbitrarily choosing seven countries to refuse refugees from or to vet in a much more extreme way will not remove those locks from those school doors that I see on an everyday basis. It will not help me to worry less about my loved ones. It will only serve to reduce our character as a nation. Let us protect ourselves by admitting that we are failing to address our most dangerous threat in any real and meaningful way. We are our own greatest threat. Let us begin there if we truly endeavor to make ourselves safer. Thanks for watching.